I'm Urho Kontori, as said, the CEO and founder of Vario. And Vario is a Finnish company, very new, just 19 months old. And it was founded by pioneer, pioneers at Nokia, Microsoft, Nvidia, Intel. We have been working on the consumer electronics for a couple of decades. And finally had uh, the opportunity to create a company to change the world again. And Vario has been working on two things in its life. One is human eye resolution VR technology. And the other one is video see-through based mixed reality. We are with engineering backgrounds, so what we have been looking at is that what is the best and fastest way to reach the hard AR, basically the place where you cannot tell apart what is virtual and what is real. And now, before venturing into the mixed reality, I'll tell you a little bit about our display technology. So, we are going to be shipping this year our first product based on bionic display. Now, we start looking into how we humans work. We are looking at one place at a time and we are operating at what is in front of us. So, how do we create displays that actually produce the high resolution where it needs to be, not all over the place. That would be the scientist approach. So uh, with this one, <clears throat> I'll let you see uh, a bit of a comparison. This is an image we took from HTC Vive Pro. It is the best VR headset today on market. And we're of course on the market only at the end of the year. When you zoom into it, you start seeing the pixelation structures of the display because it's far cry from the human eye resolution and the displays simply are not there yet today to be able to convey the full fidelity we desperately need. Now, let's take a look at uh, this same image using uh, our display technology, the Bionic display. Suddenly you start seeing all of the detail and this is like a very tight crop of the display. So the point is that we're running at over 60 pixels per degree, degree, full comfortable human eye resolution for the first time in VR headsets. So when you compare again, so this is the best in class today and this is what we're bringing to the market. If you, for example, look to the top right corner, the text and no text, text, no text. Anyway, the point is that for many of the professional use cases, which is by the way the target market for us, it's a very binary. Either you can read the text and then it's usable for you in operational simulations training, or you cannot read the text and you're basically teaching half blind people who would never be allowed to use whatever uh, system you're going to be training them for. So it's useless. Now, one of the things that we fundamentally did in the past few months was that we were able to expand the field of view of our human eye resolution region to be so large that we don't anymore see need for full foveating display solution that we have been working so far on. The quality is simply phenomenal with a very large field of view, solid state implementation. Okay? But of course, we are not the augmented world expo, not virtual reality expo, so let's start talking about the uh, mixed reality in just a second. But first, uh, I'll let you guys see the prototype that we are now uh, have started building in China. Our manufacturing partner is Flextronics. It's the second largest contract manufacturer on the planet. We are really happy to get their uh, uh, support on the R&D side as well as the manufacturer side. The thing is that we have now solved the two biggest problems. First, having the technology and then the ability to actually manufacture it. So now by the end of the year, we are of course uh, finalizing, moving to hard tooling, we're going to be uh, doing final changes to the product, verifying the production lines, then going to the production. And then the first product, the virtual reality headset with the human eye resolution uh, starts shipping. But now I'm incredibly excited to show you guys the first video that we have taken using our mixed reality technology. This also happens to be the first ever film made entirely through a mixed reality headset. And this is the quality that you're basically seeing when you put the headset on. 
all of the special effects that you see during the film, you see those when you put the headset on, everything is in real time through our stacks, software and hardware, as well as through Unity. And this was an opportunity for us to really push the envelope for, for example, what the virtual production in the future could be. And when you're looking at the movie, start wondering what things are real on this movie and what are not. Since we can't change reality, we change the eyes that see reality. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, of course, this was all shot in real time. We just had a few hours to do the whole shooting for it, and later we just didn't post the clipping and the audio tuning to be just on the right time. Now, uh, I'll show you some of the things that uh, you're seeing during the film. First of all, of course, the space station seems to be floating there in the air, or maybe connected to the uh, um, through wires to the hangar, but of course, obviously, it's completely fake, but it's getting all of the light model from the room in real time automatically. Uh, the puddles on the floor, virtual completely, reflecting both the real world as well as the virtual world, and overall, of course, benefiting from the light model. This is, again, something that you absolutely cannot do if you're using optical see-through devices. Or you need to have incredibly high contrast ratios and, of course, to be able to have per-pixel blocking of light. So, again, the video see-through is one way of shortcutting many of the problems if you want to create true real-as-life objects. But not everything is for all of the uh, purposes. We, think, we feel this is very much a comple complementing technique for optical see-through, which is at its best in mobile environments and as, for example, informational system. But with this one, you can completely mix what is real and what is virtual. Okay? The second one, here we are for the first time seeing that the table and the chairs are not actually real. And they are completely virtual, yet, again, the light model is perfect. They are casting shadows just the same way as the actor, who is obviously real, uh, is casting shadows on the floor. So, by the way, if you didn't know, Barrio stands for shadow in Finnish. So, it's the foundation principle for the company. Okay, very good. Then looking into this one, there we have a portal where you're transforming from the mixed reality into the full virtual reality. And it's actually really phenomenal to be looking back through the portal back to the reality. Uh, uh, that, for example, the headsets, uh, the uh, helmets of these uh, astronauts are reflecting. They, they reflect half the real world, half the virtual world. All of these are only possible with video see-through technology, at least for better part of a decade, I would say. There is a lot of work to be done on the optical side to reach something like this. Yet, we are going to be uh, productizing this one slightly later than the virtual reality headset. It's going to be coming as an add-on roughly half a year later. And this is how the add-on is going to look like. 
roughly speaking. We reserve <laughs> opportunity to uh, change it quite a bit, but this is the current design direction. So basically, you buy our first VR headset, you take the faceplate off, and you can attach an add-on that makes it mixed reality capable. And then it looks roughly like this after you plug it in. And this is a way for us to separate the challenges that remain on the mixed reality portion, because there are still many to have the perfection in the video see-through mixed reality. The latency needs to be really zero. We're working at the moment uh, with the principle that we're able to reach individual millisecond latency, which is completely undetectable for uh, humans. High, very high resolution. We are sampling these cameras, 25 megapixels, 100 frames per second, a lot of data bandwidth. We have been able to overcome these together with our ISP partner, Japanese company called Socionext. And only through them can we actually process that insane amount of data fast enough. Okay, looking uh, into recapping some of the things that we're doing at Varia. So we are now running a beta program. We have been giving devices to our partners um, like uh, Volkswagen Group. We have some of the people present in here. Um, some of the other car companies, many aerospace companies, Boeing, Airbus, these kind of guys. And they are helping us perfect and understand what kind of things we need to still fix on the software and hardware before shipping. Because now, changes are cheap. When you have a product out, changes take a year and take a product cycle and cost millions. So this is a way of developing fast enough. And then, early 2019, we launched the mixed reality uh, add-on. And of course, before that, we are running a beta program as well. So, if you're interested in joining uh, the beta program, getting hand, your hands on the devices, um, just uh, uh, go to varjo.com early access. And if you want to see either the mixed reality, we have a demo for that one, or the virtual reality uh, demonstrations, we have both available here. Just book a demo at the AWE at varjo.com and we'll make sure that you get a chance to see the end game of VR, which is the human eye resolution VR, making it possible to actually get all of our dreams, what you can actually achieve with uh, VR, true. As well as, of course, then the mixed reality side, which is simply phenomenal. We have really great demos showing how the shadows are cast perfectly on the floor, where you have virtual objects uh, floating, uh, not floating, but stuck on the floor. So really good stuff, and just book the demos and uh, come to the Hyatt Regency where we are showing those at our suit. So thank you. <laughs>